Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me solving GE Advanced questions. And today I have a GE Advanced 2024 paper one, question one. So this is the very first question. Now let's jump straight into the question. Fx is continuously differentiable function on zero to infinity, not inclusive, such that f of one is equal to two. That sounds like an initial condition for a differential equation, right? And this big limit is equal to 1. The question asks us to find fx, and we have to choose between a, b, c, and d. Well, let's see. Why don't we just sub in t goes to x? We see it's a 0 over 0 case. So what does that make you think of? L'Hopital's rule. So then this is equal to using L'Hopital's rule, the limit as t goes to x of 10 t to the power of 9 times f of x minus, this stays the same, x to the power of 10, multiplied by f prime of t. And on the bottom we just have 9 t to the power of 8. And this is equal to 1. So why don't we change all of the t's to x and multiply this to the right hand side. So then it becomes 10x to the power of 9 times f of x. Then minus x to the power of 10 multiplied by f prime of x. And this is equal to 9x to the power of 8. Easy. Well, hmm, why don't we just multiply the negative on both sides? So we know that this goes first now, so it's x to the power of 10, f prime of x, minus 10x to the power of 9, f of x, and this is equal to negative 9 times x to the power of 8. Hmm, doesn't this look like a differential equation? But it isn't really in what we call the standard form. So why don't we just divide both sides by x to the power of 10? So we know that f prime of x minus 10 over x f of x is equal to negative 9 over x squared. And just to make this extra clear, I'll just make f of x be y, so then we know that y prime minus 10 over x y is equal to negative 9 over x squared. And now we will multiply the integrating factor. But some of you guys might be wondering, what is an integrating factor? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you guys. So. We only have an integrating factor if it is in this standard form. We have y derivative. You see, look at this. This is y derivative, and this is minus, but in general, it can all be plus. Some function of x multiplied by y, and this is equal to some other function of x. So this is the standard form. And here we can use the integrating factor. And the integrating factor, I'm going to call it u of x. So why don't we just multiply u of x on both sides? So we know that u of x times y derivative plus u of x p of x y will equal to u of x p of x. Right? And let's think back to some basic stuff. Product rule. What is the derivative of u of x multiplied by y? Well, it's easy. Keep the first, then multiply by the derivative of the second, and you add it with keep the second, but take the derivative of the first. Well, look, 
this and this match. This y and this y match. So we know that this must equal to that. So we know that u of x, p of x, has to equal to u prime of x. Well, I'm just going to do this in one step. We can divide the u of x on both sides. So then we get this conclusion. And from here, we can integrate both sides with respect to x. And here is a typical reverse chain rule question. So this is equal to, I mean, therefore, it is ln of absolute value u of x. This will equal to the integral of p of x dx. Now you guys might be thinking, now it's called an integrating factor because it's an integral. Well, we know that we just take the e on both sides. So the absolute value of u of x will equal to e power of integral p of x dx. Now you guys might be wondering, what about the absolute value? Well, we can actually get rid of the absolute value and just add a plus minus on the right hand side. But why do we need two integrating factors? Well, we don't. We can just take the positive version. So we can just run this out and run this out and run this out. So this is our magical integrating factor. So now let's figure out a special integrating factor. U of x will be e to the power of the integral of p of x, which is just this portion here. So negative 10 over x dx. And this is equal to e to the power of negative 10 ln of x. Well, we actually don't need the absolute value. Because look at the question, f of x is a continuously differentiable function on 0 to infinity. So we know that it has to be greater than 0, so we can actually just get rid of the absolute value. So just by ignoring the absolute value, we can just put the negative 10 to the top, and e and ln cancel. So this is equal to 1 over x to the power of 10. So we multiply the integrating factor on both sides. So it becomes one over x to the power of 10 multiplied by y prime minus 10 over x to the power of 11 y. And this is equal to negative nine over x squared multiplied by one over x to the power of 10. Well, we know that the left-hand side becomes a product rule of the magical integrating factor in y. So it becomes 1 over x to the power of 10 multiplied by y derivative. And this will equal to negative 9 over x to the power of 12. And now we can just integrate both sides. So we have this stays the same because derivative and integration are inverse operations. So it's one over x to the power of 10 to the power of y is equal to the integral of negative nine over x to the power of 12 dx. And this is equal to, take the negative nine out, changes to x to the power of negative 12. So it's negative nine integral of x to the power of negative 12 dx. So we know that this is equal to negative nine multiplied by, you use the reverse power rule, it becomes one over negative 11 times x to the power of negative 11. And we see these two negatives cancel each other out. Oh, let's see. So to figure out y, we just multiply x to the power of 10 to the right hand side. So, we know that y is equal to 9 over 11 times x to the power of negative 11 plus 10 is negative 1. And then you add it with 1 over x to the power of 10 multiplied by c. 
Well, let's see. Look, we have the initial value. f of 1 is equal to 2. Now, this implies 1 goes to x and 2 goes to y. So, we can just plug in y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. So, do you know that? By skipping some steps, we can see that c is equal to 13 over 11. So, we know that y is equal to 9 over 11x added with 13 over 11 times x to the power of 10. Oh, sorry guys. You guys also may have noticed this, but when I multiply x to the power of 10 on both sides, I accidentally divided it over here. So this shouldn't be on the bottom. It should be on the top. So this is the final answer. Well, look at the choices. B, exact. So you know that B is our final answer. So, so we know that B is the final answer of this JEE advanced question. And it's in 2024, pretty recent. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed my video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.